First of all, thank you again for making your time available for this interview, and thank you for bearing with the technical issues. Let's give a big welcome to singer and songwriter Sokka to me. No, thank you for having me. You have a big following on Instagram under the tie, under the handle Sokka to me, and that's actually where I came across you too. And you do introduce yourself in one video, but in case our listeners are new to this, can to explain the name? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm um, Matt, but as I said, I. I I kind of go with suck it to me just for clarity usually with people who listen to my music because they get confused i think otherwise and um so a lot of artists that i listened to growing up uh would say things well they would say like suck it to me or something at the beginning of their song or sometimes they'll shout out in the middle some artists kind of like whisper it in the middle and like i don't know it never struck me as a, a band name at any point until like 2020 and then suddenly i was like i think i was just like doodling and then i wrote it down as one word i thought kind of looks kind of cool i like that it you you know it could look like another word or you know it's almost like a new thing when you put it all together like that um and i th probably did a quick search on the web and i was like there's no other artists called socket to me which is like a massive thing in itself because every name is taken if yeah. you look up like um so a lot of artists that i listened to growing up uh would say things well they would say like suck it to me or something at the beginning of their song or sometimes they'll shout out in the middle some artists kind of like whisper it in the middle and like i don't know it never struck me as a, a band name at any point until like 2020 and then suddenly i was like i think i was just like doodling and then i wrote it down as one word i thought kind of looks kind of cool i like that it you you know it could look like another word or you know it's almost like a new thing when you put it all together like that um and i th probably did a quick search on the web and i was like there's no other artists called socket to me which is like a massive thing in itself because every name is taken if yeah. you look up like yeah. everything is taken i i mean i've been through it so many times you know you look up like uh, chicken nuggets is probably a band name or something you know like everything is taken but i was like that's that's free and then you know i thought you know i'm a cool guy i'm gonna put a little a lowercase i in there too um i don't know yeah i was just a random creative decision but it was again it's sort of like when when i've had like a song idea that i really liked i just sort of had that in the back of my head for ages and i never at any point thought oh no i don't like that anymore so when it came out to choosing a name, it was quite a nice, easy thing to say. Okay, I'll go with that. Um, but it's funny when you said um, band name is that like so many people, because I post these videos of me, and there'd be like three of me, the amount of people who say, I can't wait to see you guys live. Or I think one person posted, um, oh, I'd love to see uh, an interview with each of you individually. So we could get to know your different personalities and i responded saying i can do that but i don't think it would be what you expect you, because yeah. it's just me but yeah i think they thought i was being like really blunt and being like i ain't making a video about that and they're like okay don't worry then and i was like no 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 no. i just mean it's just me it's just me like there's not another there's no other members it's just me but this is new to me so when those artists say soccer to me does that word actually have a definitive meaning yeah, I mean, I think the expression is like, you know, sort of like, uh, give me, give me the best you got sort of thing or like Michael Jackson's, 
he I, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes i guess it feels like it's got like a bit of a sexual undertone but i don't i don't think that's like the prominent meaning of it but <laughs> but like i i always i don't know i like that it's kind of it feels a bit tongue-in-cheek it feels a bit like cheeky it's very playful it matches your energy has a join me yeah, type of yeah. vibe to it um so i'm yeah i i i i as far as i'm aware it's just like yeah you know, suck it to me it's like give me the best you got and mm. um i don't know it's just stuck in my head so i was like yeah i'm going with that i want to mention in terms of typography the small font i is a really nice touch it's just enough to break up the text without over complicating it while keeping it really aesthetically intriguing it might entice people to checking you out just to figure out might entice people to check you out just to figure out how to say it yeah i think it probably does explain also a bit why people have the confusion about it being like soccer tome or something though that's the only thing i'd say <laughs> see i actually got the pronunciation right because i was trying to read it in my head in the easiest way to remember the spelling but when i first started following you i got it confused with instagram and kept adding it to the start of the name or I'd add a third T somehow on Spotify. <laughs> but honestly, it's a great name and I think people are going to love it. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> so you mentioned that you started off shuffling between bands, working on collaborative projects. How did you get into music itself? Was it inspired by parents or? Um, oh, God. oh, that was loud. Um, I, I think growing up, there weren't many um, people in my family that did music. Uh, however... I think it was when I started secondary school, I I, know, I just suddenly got like this urge to play uh, guitar and I loved Spanish. You know, I think I saw a YouTube video of a Spanish guitarist and I thought it was the coolest thing ever and started getting lessons. And I was the only kid who wanted to learn Spanish guitar. Everyone else was learning, you know, classic rock. It would be like Led Zeppelin or ACDC or something. Which worked in my favor because I ended up having just one to one lessons with this guitar teacher, which I, I loved. It meant I learned so much more and I probably became more passionate through that. Um, he ended up telling me more about songwriting and music theory. And I thought, oh, this is really interesting. And I was like, I have to start a band. I want to do songwriting. And it interested the thought of writing music interested me way more than learning other people's music growing up i think at that point um and then i formed a band and then joined another band joined another band and then i was just like you know i, I, I want to do music so i just ended up making that my focus i went to, went to college to study music i went to uni to study music um yeah so from, probably from when i was about 11 i've just been like hyper fixated on making that my career in one way or another um <laughs> I mean, it's it's a it's 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 got its you know it's it's good side and it's bad side. It's um, I love it, and there's no feeling like writing a song. I feel like I could be in the worst mood or depressed, and I could write a song, and it would make me feel so much better. Um, but uh, the it, it's it's not always a financially best option it's not always the best financial option to be a musician that's all i would say but um it depends and in the end you know there are actually way more opportunities to earn money in music but i think especially growing up when all your friends are starting to get jobs um you You're kind right. of have to be in it for the long run yeah yeah i, I mean i didn't i didn't want to do it but... i think when you're growing up you think that's the only option you think i have to go and perform at a, a bar or do an open mic night for free and then eventually i'll get a record deal or something i think you have that like that's that mindset kind of that yeah you're like that you'll get a big break but i think the reality is um there are so many opportunities within the music industry whether that's writing for uh sync catalogs or whether that is like session musicians or teaching music or uh i mean they're just there, there are there's so you know whatever it is but there there are alternatives and when you start finding out about those it's um it opens your mind about you know like you how you can make that work for yourself yeah exactly and then you can always learn something new that's going to also benefit it always comes back to writing music and you can always carry on doing that um so yeah i think it is it can you know it can be a bit soul destroying if you're focused on doing like open mic nights every single night because yeah. it's 
you it's not really the creative career you want yeah yeah exactly back when you were working with multiple bands were they different styles of music or yeah i mean it, th there's probably always been an underlying indie or alternative sort of vibe to it all um but or like even like a bit of a pop sort of feeling to it mm. and i think um yeah i mean this is just the first project where i can sort of kind of fully focus on what yeah. i want i guess selfishly but i can just be like oh no i i like this and that's gonna be like that <laughs> it's, yeah i mean it's but it's it is so much fun you you know i almost feel guilty that i have so much fun getting to do this sort of thing because it makes it feel like less of a job but at the same time i'm like it's just so it's just great i love it <laughs> speaking of social media you're obviously very active on Instagram and YouTube, posting pretty much daily to create fun, engaging content with your fans. I myself found you for the Instagram algorithm, suggesting a reel for the song Run Run. It was a scene from March in between a field of trees, and I was particularly hooked on the B-E-G-G-I-N-G -G -G part. Oh, yeah, it's, I, it was one of those parts of the songs that I, um, I, I waited way too long to start using but I, I i have this habit of making a whole bunch of uh like videos for my social media so i've got this like backlog and then eventually when i get around to doing more i'm like oh okay i can do this other part but it takes so long to get around to doing it sometimes but um yeah, yeah no it was a... <laughs> i guess filming has more variable conditions whereas editing is more flexible can I'll, I'll you know I'll always have like like time to edit later down the line but getting people getting time to film or find someone who can film with me is always the uh a bit of a hurdle in the whole process do you always find yourself needing someone to man the camera if if it's those sort of videos where I'm like uh out in the countryside or something I usually need someone behind the camera just so they can see that I'm in shot but also um just like stop and start recording because like I'll constantly run out of memory on my phone or something or I need to play the track as well um it seems silly because my I I try to keep the videos like super simple um and yeah it always feels like this like weirdly complicated process I don't know why but um it is very basic but yeah <laughs> I suppose now that you mention it it might be easy to forget that not only do you have to check that you're in shot you also need to play the music be in sync and check the footage among other things to worry about it's so funny as well because i used to be uh in uh when i was in wales i'm recently sort of moving hence why i'm in this room and it's all a little bit uh well i've cleared it for this for the sake of this but it's all a bit of a mess but um uh in wales you'd go out into countryside and it would just be empty there's no one there um which is where i was comfortable just like singing along to my song whereas i've come back to england and people constantly stop and then before you know you've got like 10 people watching you like lip sync a song or something i mean i am i am singing but it's just it's it's been something i've had to get comfortable with but it's a really bizarre thing i don't know whether they're thinking i'm an idiot or whether they're like okay this is cool or not but yeah it's a it's it's a new thing for me <laughs> i have to say that your clone edits are very smooth sometimes these things can be choppy i, I appreciate i mean sometimes it's good sometimes the wind i don't know if you've seen it like some of the videos the wind catches the camera and it's shaking and you have these me's just going and i'm like i i have to post it because i don't have more content right more now content. Uh, so you have like floating me's wobbling about or something and I don't know. For some reason as well, I don't know, you probably wouldn't have looked because it's all the same across my socials, but on YouTube, they have this weird issue where like halfway through my videos, they glitch. So like, I just suddenly stop. It's, I don't know, the amount, of, it's, it's like a, almost like a strobe. It's probably not very great, but I don't know. I keep having this issue with YouTube. I don't know if you hear about different areas of creative artists getting kind of sick of working on their one project over and over again. So for example, video editors get so sick of either hearing the same audio or watching the same footage on repeat for like the hundredth time while editing. My question is, how do you feel when you visit older work, say from five years ago, or perhaps lyrics and songs that are unpublished? Do you feel a bit cringe because you've grown and improved? Um, I think if you go back far enough, absolutely like there like you write 
especially when you're starting out you write the cringiest things or the most you know you th i don't know i don't know if it's the thing that every songwriter goes through but you go for me and a lot of people i know you go through a phase of over complicating it and you're like yeah. you're just like we're throwing up a dictionary of words because <laughs> you're like oh this is so yeah. deep and i'm this is so meaningful um and you yeah there's a lot of stuff before i started releasing stuff under socket to me but i think as far as everything i've done so far i think just because music is my passion uh in general i like to from my perspective see it as like a journey of you know there's some sort of progression there and people can see how it started i guess and i'm sure it's the same for people who make like who do full-time content creation on social media where they're like oh, i'm really proud of that first video um and maybe they don't get that same feeling but like i think as far as for me i didn't start off as a content creator for social media it was all about the music and that's kind of why i think it's uh i'm not it's taken me a bit more time to get to somewhere i'm like more invested or proud of those things that i'm doing but as far as the music yeah i'm 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 more uh uh tolerant sounds like the wrong word but i'm more tolerant of my older stuff now but it's God, kind of like yeah a... if you heard some of that stuff so <laughs> So being a pretty new fan myself, I actually had to go back from Run Run and Disguise to your earliest work on Spotify, and it's a song called Seashore. I was rather surprised that it was only released back in 2021, fairly recent. I really enjoyed that, though it was rather different to your current music. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I've always done like other projects over the years, and um, they've called? always been part yeah so I, you know i would have done bands growing up and um yeah ma basically collaborations however once yeah i think i guess it must have just been before lockdown but i was like i just really wanted to put something out that was all me and i had full creative control over it um seashore was a song i did with a friend from uh who i studied at university with and uh it was it was kind of like an essential part of the process as far as i had to do a song to get my name up on spotify before i could release music um uh and also he was just getting into it too so he'd written this like lo-fi track which wasn't necessarily the genre i was going for but it was sort of my my shoe into spotify um but uh yeah no it, otherwise yeah quite recent i mean i don't think i actually ended up releasing my proper solo stuff until 2022 which is still very well even more recent um but yeah i'm hoping hoping it will it will go on for a long time hopefully <laughs> you mentioned indie pop and some other similar terms in your social media is that what you'd categorize your style as or perhaps there's a new hybrid name for it or you don't mind evolving into other styles as you progress i mean i think in general like I find that the ultimately I'll probably call it indie, um, and but generally people sort of change the name of what it is over the years. Like it used to just be indie pop or something, and then it became bedroom pop, and then it's sort of I don't know. And now people are saying like alt music, but they kind of all sort of like weave in and out of each other a bit. I think, but I don't know. I've always had it in my head. There's a song called Diane Young by Vampire Weekend. Okay. which i loved when it came out and i i kind of always felt like my music is like if that song was a genre that's the genre of my music i can't i don't know a better way to describe it but just the sort of like that energy and the the, the instrumentation of it sort of being a band but kind of produced and poppy and more in your face i guess it's just yeah i don't know There's, I, I think i could probably have that as a reference for most of my music in some way which maybe sounds like a weird thing but <laughs> yeah no that makes a lot of sense i guess like maybe if someone was going to write about like a small description of your music style maybe that's what they use from now on as a reference because yeah now some people who describe certain people's music through other people's music as part of the description yeah yeah, because, yeah i mean music is always evolving there's always going to be new styles it gets mm. somewhat confusing mm. 
Yeah. Um, I mean, someone someone called my music uh, indie sleaze recently, which I've tried playing with in my videos and putting it in the caption. But um, I think indie sleaze is essentially 2010 or the 10s decade of indie. Okay. And like some, I don't know yeah. whether like, you know, so like MGMT, um, it's the only ref, uh, the only artist I can think of in that genre, but, it, but that sort of sound, I guess. So I don't know, quite a few people have said that. So yeah. indie sleaze, I don't know how long that genre will last or if that'll be forgotten, but maybe that's me. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I honestly love that you have all these questions on your social media or playlist sharing these interactive posts. It's kind of it kind of embraces the new age of media platforms helping both artists and fans to fast track a bond or connection. And personally I find defining genre to be of little importance. Music is an expression and people grow and adapt as well as their music. I mean, Beyonce is definitely trying something different. <laughs> It's also so fun and actually reminds me I really enjoy your sense of fashion or style. It might just be me, but I find it very nostalgic. Perhaps the colours or the materials, there's something about your vibe. Yeah, I, I, yeah, no, I think I think I do. I mean, for me, like, I mean, growing up anyway, like playing in like fields and trees and stuff, that I guess has an element of nostalgia and it's not something I've done until I've started doing these videos, I'm like constantly going out. I'm like, oh wow, this is great because I'm discovering new places and going for walks that I wouldn't usually do. Um, and you know, I can still do something, you know, productive. Um, but then also, I guess there's an element of, I don't know, I've been growing out of mullet and stuff, and that sort of vague like aesthetic of. I don't even know what decade that's associated with anymore, but I'm sure that gives like maybe it's that association with childhood will, uh, wildness or out of the box like unhinged thought process. That kind of quirky I think creativity. Also, I mean, there's probably that thing of I do my best to only go out when it's like clear blue sky or you know a nice day, which is a rare thing here in England. But um, I think you kind of have that sometimes have that concept of when you're younger it's always sunny it's always a nice day and you know you, you know that rose tinted glasses thing um so i'm i guess maybe that kind of gives a bit of a feel of like oh yeah, yeah right us fans something. are taking for granted that wales isn't necessarily known for sunny weather i get like one day a month to film so <laughs> Remy Wolf being one of your inspiring artists, do you have any art of other artists that particularly inspire you in terms of music and lyric writing? Oh, right. Yeah, I mean, yeah, as I said before, there's Remy Wolf, who I would definitely recommend checking out. I do have a playlist on my Spotify with like, that I have very much thought out as far as like songs that I'm like, I love or their influences to me. But yeah, Remy Wolf, uh, there's an artist called Jorney, um, who is awesome i had a brief love affair with unknown mortal orchestra i really love them um trying to think rem i mean rem one of those bands that have just been with me my whole life i've loved them probably since i got into music at like 11 um and as in 11 years old not this morning but <laughs> um i yeah i mean they're not for everyone, but I would always recommend REM. Um, there's an, also an artist called Laurel. She's really cool. She's got some really good songs. Very like nostalgic kind of 80s synth vibe. Um, yeah, I mean, those are some artists, artists off the top of my head, but they're definitely worth checking out. They're so good. Oh, also, you know, actually, I have two friends who I really love the music called Youth Sector and Paul Tomlin they both make really great music um and it's in the same sort of genre or soundscape as me um but they're really cool again worth checking out and influence me and I've worked with them so that's absolutely fantastic I'm not familiar with any of them but I would love to get the list from you to share and have a listen myself I don't listen to mainstream music as often these days because I just enjoy finding all these amazing and cool artists like you out there that are putting out all this unique and fun stuff. And mainstream stuff, you kind of get exposed to either way. So 
the most exciting thing for me is heading is hearing parts of a new song like when i found run run but then adding it to the playlist and treating myself to the song on my next commute etc yeah 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 Yeah. exactly it's more accessible now i think isn't it it's um you sort of have a pick and mix of loads of songs as opposed to being limited to what the radio will give you you know those like five songs they play on repeat so yeah. it's um no it's definitely a good thing everyone's got their sort of own way of listening now i think yes yeah. mm. yeah people are terrified of shape of you by ed sheeran now mm. yeah yeah you never know what's going to be the next big song it could be literally like a, an acoustic mandolin song or it could be you know yeah beyonce doing country music so it could, it could be anything <laughs> yeah. music is presently so crazy diverse it's hard to define too yeah and and there's an audience for everyone now i think you know like whatever you make or whatever you're doing there's someone out there who's gonna love that i think and mm. as long as you're being authentic and creating something then you're doing something pretty amazing so this is a question that i don't think gets asked a lot with some music artists being introverts as well, it could potentially make it harder too. How did you find transitioning from recording to playing live? Was it nerve wracking? For me, like, it, I, I've, I mean, I've done quite a lot of performing over the years, but it's been more uh, based around uh, performing covers at gigs or um, especially in Wales, I used to do it a lot. And, you know, occasionally you do your own song. And I got really comfortable doing that. It took me a long time. I'm not naturally uh confident in those scenarios or like a uh i love playing it's just like talking and engaging with people that sort of taking me a bit more time but when it's come to doing yeah filming tiktoks or whatever it is in public that that has been like a whole other thing for me because it's it's even more uncomfortable play you know you've you've, you're stood there with an electric guitar that isn't plugged in and Mm -hmm. like your main focus is to, I guess, move and just make sure you're lip syncing the words. But you're not necessarily always in tune or you're like a mile away from the speakers, so you can hardly hear it. And I don't, yeah, I just, I'm just thinking the whole time. I'm like, I, I have no idea what these people are thinking that are stopping and watching or, um, <laughs> whereas when you're performing, at the very least, you can have like this back and forth with the audience where they're like, yeah, one more. They're like, just stop. <laughs> but it's, you know, it's... it's, it's... Like people being like too quiet, quiet or too supportive. supportive. Yeah, exactly. But um, yeah, it's just it's just different with TikTok. I think, I don't know if it's something you've experienced, but like, I remember before I was on social media, I, you know, you'd see people filming these things in public and you're like, oh, that makes me feel really uncomfortable. Or I was um, just about to ask if you experienced there, secondhand, yeah, cringe, secondhand cringe, cringe, like watching someone, someone and feel like, oh, I can't watch this. I used to, but I think now that I have to do it, I get it a bit more. Some people are more naturally cringy, I think. <laughs> <laughs> like, I guess, like, um, some people, you know, have so much confidence that they they maybe push it a bit too far or they don't have enough confidence that makes it cringy and i feel like i'm still re- trying to find that sweet spot because i i can't watch my videos they make me cringe so. well, yeah. <laughs> but, do you have a dream performance venue any place that you thought would be amazing to do a show at a dream venue um i guess i don't know one's a real place and I, that would be in REM being my favorite band of all time. They come from a place called uh, Athens, Georgia. And there's just like some iconic places they've played. One being the 40 Watt Club, which I think may have closed down. I'm not sure. But that would be like a really cool place just to fulfill that childhood dream. Um, otherwise, as nice as I think, like I'm sure they're like playing like the O2 or Glastonbury or Coachella or like a big festival would be. I'd love the idea of just having like, because I see people on Instagram doing it as well, but they have like bean bags. It's like a really cozy room. Maybe there's like a little fire going or something or whatever it is. And it's just like really like a small intimate venue. And But it's all people who really just appreciate that music or they know the words or something. I think yeah. that would be 
um interesting. if i could just do loads of those um that would that would probably be ideal but as i said that's just like a uh, a venue in my head at the minute. So. <laughs> those kind of settings make me think of those cabins or tree houses, like modern glamping styles of tree houses. Actually, very lovely. Yeah, I think it's yeah. just trees will give me PTSD. <laughs> yeah, we're referring to one of the reels I showed where he was stuck in a tree for quite some time. But yeah, I don't remember the name, but a lot of artists definitely do acoustic rendition in small shows or even like looping from scratch. Oh, yeah, I like the the tiny desk sort of things. Yeah. Or um, yeah, yeah. I, those it are really is cool. a lot of pressure. Like this girl was going to loop, but the device played up right at the start of her show. But she conversed with the crowd while she got it working. I mean, I've tried. I I have got a loop, like a loop station, um, and I started practicing my songs on that. I mean, it may be something I do anyway initially, but it is it is a lot of pressure like yeah, compared yeah, to yeah. just having musicians where you're like more intuitive with each other because you are locked in like you know if you're singing and you cough and then it's stuck in the loop and it's just coughing every five seconds you're like oh, oh this is horrible no this is a huge thing i recall like my first podcast episode i read my script faster and faster as it went on all my own mouth noises i just can't yeah <laughs> Yeah, yeah yeah i think if if you know once i um get live shows and that sort of thing sorted and have um you know a good live set up with a band I'd, I'd love to have a band uh again that would i think i would enjoy every gig scenario having that confidence you know when that sort of camaraderie where you know you can trust these other musicians around you to mm -hmm. put on a great performance is um it's such a great experience so yeah i mean those things, things like Tiny Desk or doing any of these performances only make me a little bit nervous when I imagine doing them completely by myself. And it's mm. all reliant on me like playing because my songs yeah. aren't acoustic. They're not built uh, necessarily around that sort of thing. So um, I'd love yeah. to. Yeah. Is there a song so good that you wish you were the one to have written it? The one to have written? Oh, um, that's a very very difficult question mm. it's a very good question um i guess probably diane young by vampire weekend just because i've based so much of my identity on that song perhaps i don't know um then again if i'd written it maybe i would have lost my identity because i wouldn't know <laughs> who it was it's a um, question, isn't it? it is um it's kind of like uh, that film yesterday or whatever it was called about the Beatles, where that guy goes back and writes all the songs. Um, yeah. it's, uh, uh, it's such an odd place to be. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, either that or like a Beatles song, you know, like a decent big song, you know, yeah, without being really too long. greedy. Very long song, isn't it? <laughs> um yeah so it's really hard in uh, like an mm. interview circumstance not to ask what would you yeah, do it's, 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 <laughs> it's so existential <laughs> um okay you obviously enjoy singing do you ever belt out one or two songs in the shower rarely i'm rarely. not much of a shower singer yeah like i'm the sort of person that i mean i'm getting better but i need like a full empty house I need to know no one's in the house, no one's around, and then I will maybe like belt out a song. Yeah. Um, I probably whistle in the shower, maybe. Whistle, I'm yeah. more of a whistler. I feel like it's more like natural or something. Yeah, I mean, you always see these people in X Factor, and they're like, "Oh, I just sing in the shower," and then they're amazing. And I think, well, now you've made me insecure about singing in the shower. <laughs> yeah 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 exactly <laughs> um because like i cannot i can relate as well when you said about the whole being like shy about you know like when people are watching because like i yeah when i really get into songs i like i you know for example like if i'm listening to a song i would probably want to kind of like oh yeah once it gets really going you kind of want to listen to it but when, yeah. you when you're walking outside if you're grocery shopping or like walking on the street 
the mouth actually does still make noises when you're like yeah. the thing is even with just lip syncing or listening on earpods when i really get into it your mouthing makes like sounds and i realized that like once when sharing a bunk bed at a camp my friend came up to ask like what on earth all that mouth sound was i'm like you can't help it that when you're walking down the street you're listening to music you feel a bit like a main character but you forget that no one else can hear that that strut yeah or like when you're sad you're leaning on the bus window and you're like and then everyone else is looking at you like what is, what's he doing <laughs> yeah the drop of rain running down the glass i'm so mysterious yeah <laughs> but i do love like I, the music does have the power to like make you move your body or move you know interact in that way even it brings you out of your comfort zone and gives you that confidence um even uh even when it might be a little bit embarrassing sometimes but yeah, yeah the emotional release and like fun in everyday moments yeah everything's better with a with a theme tune or something i think i'm sure all of us are eager to know if you have quite a few songs in the backlog or queued up to release uh yeah um i mean i again i there's there's a lot of um music that at one point in time i thought you know th this is the good stuff and like a bit of time passes and i'm like that was not that was not the good stuff and i think eventually i wrote uh easy tiger and there was just something about it that for me whether i, I don't know if it's like lyrically or like this the, the production or the soundscape but i was just like I kind of felt like I'd found myself a bit in that and I thought I like this and I'm not getting bored of it and I could write more of this and then um, so everything I've written after that is pretty much something that I could or will potentially release I've got I have got a uh, sort of release schedule as it were uh, in for the for the next year or so okay. um, but everything before that I've somewhat discounted on the basis of like the quality threshold but okay i'm super excited to talk about this because when i first heard run run and disguise i thought the lyrics were well thought out yet slightly abstract and it's a good thing with the single seashore inclusive leading up to easy tiger the lyrics are well thought out and already not only pleasant to listen to there's definitely quality pensmanship uh, penmanship. I'd say I would have guessed you have arrived at the matured stage of lyric writing. Um, but as you said, Easy Tiger is where you, your fun, quirky and playful soundscape and lyrics really start to shine as you really kind of dive into what you want. It's such a fun song to vibe to. Like I'd relate it to kind of a rough diamond and the two latest releases are more your refined crafts, if that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, up until like easy tiger every song i'd written had probably centered around love or something and there's that like thing where you can't escape coming back to that lyric or to that topic of relationships which is natural because that's something i think everyone relates to and it's just like a very common experience is that we have relationships but um i think also just with like it coinciding with lockdown or whatever i think Mm -hmm. everyone could like collectively started feeling a different emotion that we were related to and um i don't know i was also listening to a lot of um remy wolf if you do you know i'm not familiar with her but i'll definitely give her a listen she's definitely worth checking out she's really she's got like such clever lyrics and they're always a bit off the wall or they've got some strange reference or just really the really good lyrics and even like there's i, I mean there's so many artists but I love, you know, just having some like more random topics in there and giving you an excuse to sort of say random things a bit more like, yeah, pineapple pizza topping, which apparently touched the nerve with people. But like, <laughs> um... <laughs> controversy is usually a big part of lyric writing, isn't exactly. it? I mean, I mean, it, it, I guess it worked in my favor in that sense. It was. Are you a pineapple pizza guy? I am I I can tolerate it now. I I mean no, no, I yeah, I mean I'm not I don't I I personally find that savory and sweet are like should stay separate in my experience, but even that in itself I think a lot of people would disagree with so. Um that's fair. Something for everyone, right? Now, I don't want to take up all of your time, but there is one very crucial question left. 
You mentioned that you've got songs scheduled for the year. Are these singles mostly, or is there a full album idea on the way too? Can you talk about it a little bit? I I do. Uh, I mean, um, what's the word? Um, on like the lowdown, I do have an album coming at some point, and it's 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 something I'm very excited about. Heck yeah! I'm so psyched for it. Really looking forward to it. I I was quite quiet last year because I was fleshing out the whole concept. Like I am, I am ready with everything essentially now um, to, to almost share it. And it's sort of working my way towards that and just building up a fan base that is going to be hungry for that from me because I'm, I'm still quite small, I guess at the moment, but yeah, I am, I am, I am, that is in the works. That is definitely in the works. And I'm, I am very excited about, everything that i have to share about that so, and everything does tie in like as far as like the artwork and stuff it is it it does i don't know well, it will make sense when all of that comes together it will so it's uh it is thought out i uh, reckon there would be some opportunity for some soccer to there is merch. i have i have got you do? Merch, but i just haven't yeah. made a video promoting it uh i've only got a couple bits but it happened in this room but they've they vanished. I don't know where they are. I don't know where they are. I've made some. Uh, so on on my uh, single artworks, you know, I've got like the mask. I've got the fingers. I love the walking fingers. Um, and I mean, it's that's sort of all central to the theme. But uh, it's an embroidered patch, and I got big ones made for the artwork. But I've also got some little small ones I'm selling on my TikTok and my Bandcamp store. Uh, which have an iron-on backing, so you can put them on like your jacket or your jumper. Mm. I just need yeah. to promote it. That's, that's my principle. <laughs> you hear that, guys? Let's get this happening. Ask about it on his socials. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, is there anything you would like to say to your Socketeers before we wrap things up? Uh, I mean, I always just, I feel like I always want to say that they're amazing. And that I'm so grateful that they're listening to my music and that they're supporting me because I don't get to do what I do without them. And uh, I hope you stick around because it's going to be one hell of a year, hopefully. I think so. I and you are only just starting <laughs> to play and get creative with your music and it's only April. It is. It is only April. So we've got we've got the bulk of the year. And the new taxi has just begun. So, I mean, we've got the financial year as well. I mean, Ooh. so, and then... <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be good. Uh, yes, but please send me a playlist link and of relevant links so I can access it myself plus recommend it to the others. Um, finally, yeah. thank you again for being so gracious to allow me to interview you and take up your time. Um, and being patient with all the stuff yeah, that cool. happened. I don't know if it's apparent, but I'm fangirling pretty hard, to be honest. Um, yeah, thank you so much for having me and for reaching out. I really appreciate it. I'm glad we finally got on the call and we got we got the audio working um, and everything as well. Yeah. Would be also such a privilege if I can interview again in, say, like six to 12 months, especially with more songs being released by then. Hmm. Yeah, definitely. We'll stay in touch uh, and we'll, um, we'll, we'll um, do this again at some yeah. point. <laughs> I better let you get to your other meeting. Yes, I'm going to head off. But yeah, thanks again so much for having me, Tim. Or oh, Timmy, sorry. And uh, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll keep in touch and I'll send you some links. Thank you, Socket, yeah. to me. Good, good night. Take care. Night? Uh, morning. Well, uh, uh, lunchtime. Afternoon then. <laughs> yeah, it's 9 p.m. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, it's later, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, Enjoy your well. day. Bye.